Looking to make a palette wall photo backdrop? Watch today's video and we will show you step on step on how to do that. Hi, I'm Bailey with DIY on the house and today I'm making a palette wall photo backdrop for my wedding. We're in project mode, we've been in the barn all day doing different things for the wedding and so we decided to make the palette wall today. And so if you're looking for palettes, we've got these for free if you don't have any. And what you can do is go on to Craigslist, uh, Facebook Marketplace, or we even went to a plumbing supply store. They have tons of palettes that they have no use for. So we got all these for free. And so the first step is I'm going to have a donor palette where I'm gonna take the slats off of that one and fill in the gaps on my other palettes because I want a very full and uh, just full look for the palette. So the tools you'll need is a sawzall. For the sawzall, we, you need to have a blade that can cut metal because we will be cutting, uh, palette nails are a lot different than other nails. They twist and so if you try to pop off these slats, you're gonna ruin the slats. So you need to have a sawzall blade be able to cut behind those nails and just cut them off. Along with the Saza, you will also need a brad nailer. That's this, the nail gun that we're using. You can also use just a hammer and nails, but this will be a lot simpler for us and much faster. And then you will need a chop saw. This is dependent on you and the look that you're going for. What we have is we have these slats are a lot bigger than the palette that I need. So we'll cut them down or we'll splice them together just to give it a nice rough look. So you'll need the, just going over it again, you'll need the Saza, the brad nailer, and then this chop saw, and then the Saza needs the blade that can cut metal. Okay, let's get started. We have my donor palette. Make sure you have some eyeglasses or eye protection that hopefully doesn't get caught on your hair. And use that while you're going. And you can either lean up your palette against something that's sturdy, or you will also need someone to hold it. So just to begin is you'll just start sawzawing right behind the slats and cutting those nails. starter palette and now I'm going to put my donor slats in between just to make it much more full. So we will just go ahead and do a mark to put it in edge with the other slats. If you have a slat that is too short then you will want to scab together pieces. So you put that and then you cut it in line put it in halfway with that joint so then you have enough for this slat to be nailed into the joint and this slat to be nailed into the joint. <laughs> Depending on the width of your palette, do about four to five of the brad nails in each uh, end of the palette. So we'll go ahead and pop those in. Now as I said before, if you have to scab together pieces, Make sure that you have about half of the slat on the joist so that you can have each of those slats connect to the joist. I'll go ahead and finish these off screen. So the dimensions of my palette wall will be three by two. I have a couch that I'm gonna be putting in front of it. The couch is eight foot. So with three pallets wide, that'll be about 12 foot. And then two pallets high, that'll be about eight foot. So I will go ahead and do all of my palettes, fill them in with the donor palettes, and then we'll come back and show you what is the best way to connect those palettes to make the wall. Once Bailey finished making the individual palettes, we enlisted Ross and Nicholas uh, to help assemble them. We laid them down flat and we matched the top and the bottom and we made sure that the sides were meeting so that they had something to attach to each other. We used long two to three inch screws and really did a good job screwing the sides together where we could. Then we took a two by four and ran it along the back, along the mid seam, and we attached that with screws. We took scab extra pieces from the donor palette and we placed those on the vertical seams to give them extra support. 
To stand the pallet wall to make sure it was sturdy, Ross used 4x4s that we had available. You can use something equally as sturdy, but we just had some 4x4s, and he screwed them from the top and the sides. Once they were screwed uh, everywhere onto the wall, he took grade stakes to hold them in place on the ground and then screwed through the grade stakes and into the 4x4. It was really uh, important. We live in a high wind area, so we wanted to make sure that that was just as sturdy as the wall. So here is the completed wall. It was a absolute hit for the wedding. Just beautiful. We got tons and tons of great group pictures out of it. So when you're making yours, if you have any questions, please comment down below. Each palette is a little different. Each dimension is a little different, but we hope that these tips help you make your perfect palette wall for your photo backdrop. As always, thanks for watching DIY on the house.